Welcome back. Uh, and today's session will be on IT governance and IT strategy. So this is domain two, the first part, first chapter, domain two. So at the end of the session, you should have a fair enough understanding of enterprise governance of information and technology, good practices for EGIT, which is in enterprise governance. Auditor's role in EGIT, information security governance, information system strategy, strategic planning, business intelligence. So what is EGIT, information governance of I and T, information and technology. Enterprise governance of information and technology. So IT governance, the starting point for IT governance, how did it start? IT governance cannot just start on its own. So objectives for the organization needs to be set. So objective can be set by the organization so as to say that, okay, as an organization, we need to achieve $600 billion of turnover by so and so date. So that could be the objective of the organization. And from that objective of the organization, you would have the enterprise's IT's objective being set. So it will start from there. Now, who is responsible for governance of the enterprise? The board of directors. So board, senior management and internal departments, which could be finance or some other department, will provide input to the IT decision making process so as to form a part of the enterprise IT. So stewardship of IT resources. So when we are talking about enterprise governance of information and technology or EGIT, we are actually looking at stewardship of IT resources. Board is responsible for this stewardship. So it is under the stewardship of the board. So the board decides. So board actually owns the entire stewardship part. IT will have to align, as I said, itself and support itself to whatever the enterprise's objectives are. It is also about IT resource management. It is also about IT performance management. How the performance is happening, how much, okay, this much has been the investment, how much am I getting back on it? Compliance management, so this could be you know, examples of this could be in compliance in relation to certain requirements of industries. It could be PCI DSS, it could be HIPAA, it could be SOX, it could be GDPR. So when we talk about governance, we are actually talking about an enterprise objective which is set, which is agreed upon. So there are various stakeholders. It could be the owners, it could be the people who are using the enterprise. It could be people who are part of the enterprise. So, it, so various people, various stakeholders, will actually set upon the uh, objectives for which, from which the governance will be set up. And management actually will be to ensure that they are aligned properly, plans are there, builds are there, and runs are there, and monitoring is there, so as to achieve the enterprise's objective. Again, EGIT ensures that IT delivers value. Most of the places, most of the organizations, IT could be a cost factor out there. But how much value is it delivering actually? Business is set at a level. It needs to go from this point to that point. That is where the objective of the business is. How much value is IT setting into that? What are the IT risks which are involved? Are IT risks getting addressed? So what are the good practices for EGIT? So once we have an understanding of what EGIT is, what are the good practices? So why would I need IT governance? That's a basic question. I need IT governance because there are lots of stakeholders which are involved. So if it's a publicly traded company, so there would be public who is involved and who has put in their money. So they would obviously want to know how good it is getting used or bad it is getting used. So I have to satisfy the stakeholder needs. 
and the generation of value has to come from IT resources. Business managers and board of the organization nowadays are asking for better returns because IT investment. So suppose, for example, if it's a, um, say a manufacturing company, it would possibly require a SAP investment out there. Now there are various modules in SAP. So it could be GRC, it could be vendor management and blah, blah. So it would again depend upon the kind of returns which IT is giving, which would necessitate certain investments. As I said, IT expenditures are increasing. Regulatory requirements, which could be PCI DSS, SOC, GDPR. Most, if not many, of the IT you know, uh, functions or IT activities are currently getting outsourced by big organizations. So how is that happening? And how is an acquisition of a new software or a new module is happening? How were the control frameworks, which could be a security framework like 27001, a business continuity framework like the BCMS standard, and good practices getting adapted? How is cost getting optimized? And how are benchmarks being set in relation to competitors or industry standards? And how is the acceptance of frameworks across? So this answering these questions basically will ensure that you have a good EGIT practice within the organization. So information security governance. So it is again, you know, as I said, governance is at the top level. So it is a part of the corporate governance subset. So it, it ensures that a organization has a proper build on information security governance framework. Needs to ensure that confidentiality, integrity, availability, and continuity and protection of assets in case there is a chance that the asset might get lost is maintained. As we saw in the previous slides also, both the CEOs are responsible for IS governance. Members of the senior management needs to approve the security policy. And it is always good if an organization is big enough and it has various organize uh, various sub departments you know like hr finance accounts vendor management sales marketing production so all the people from those senior management actually gets involved while developing the security policies because their needs their it relationships could be different so all those people actually someone at the top again should approve it so smart, so smart when we talk about smart, so we actually we are saying that, okay, this needs to be properly drafted. So it comes from the smart principle. So it needs to be properly drafted, the IS objectives, so that they're achieved. It ensures we have a proper resource management and there is a proper process integration. So it needs actually the IT governance, the IT security governance, it actually needs to get meshed with the various processes properly. We talk about strategic planning. So like an organization strategic planning, IT strategic planning also needs to be aligned with the organization strategic plan. So IT strategic planning is also possibly in the range of three to five years when we are talking about strategic planning. We are looking for cost effective solutions. One has to see whether it is fitting into the current IT systems or how much functional changes might be required to be done or how it is fitting into it or what could be the functional fit. Again, there would be a review of the return on investment and the operational tactical business plans will need to be merged with the IT strategy formulation. And how much involved is the CIO in the entire process? Because this is a part of the CIO's overall activity. So how much is he or she involved because until and unless there is a proper buy-in from the top such things will never be operationalized with this we come to business intelligence what is basically business intelligence so business intelligence as the name suggests is nothing but collection and analysis of information to assist decision -making. 
so one could be you know collecting information analyzing that information so as to ensure that there is a proper decision making so as as the concept is it could be applied anywhere it could be applied in process cost optimizations customer satisfactions it could be applied in kpis why do i or an organization requires business intelligence you know kpis you could argue that it could come directly customer satisfaction i could just go and measure but then again when organizations grow big and there are lots of complexities involved there are lots of legal requirements involved there could be competitive pressures also coming in so collecting and analyzing such data through a business intelligence tool becomes much better standardized and scientific IT at very recently teams should be present for representing different functional perspectives that is a better way of looking at bi final funding for this technology because this is a technology which the organization is possibly going for it has to be from the senior management but when the bi starts off as a project there has to be proper definitions for data business rules and metrics it cannot keep changing uh, the definitions cannot keep changing uh, un uniformly so uniformly there should be proper definitions of okay this is what is defined as a data these are the business rules and these are the metrics that needs to be monitored though this may not be into the depth when uh, a question comes out in a cisa exam nor maybe the is auditor uh, maybe uh, you know Uh, required to know such architecture in depth but one needs to have an overall understanding of how an enterprise data flow architecture happens so at the top you have the user interface layer or the presentation of the desktop layer you have the data source layer which are the data sources which are you know coming in from operations or non operations teams and all you have the core data warehouse so all data of the organization is captured or majority of the data is captured out there data mart layer which is a subset of the previous one which is the data warehouse layer and it could be for one particular function so it could be for the operations team for the hr team for one particular function data staging and quality layer which actually does the copying transformation into a proper dw format because you know uh, tomorrow the structure may change and all that so the format has to remain the same so it does you know you, you could be pulling in data from different sources so mm, that uh, format on the dw has to be permanent constant which is already defined so this layer does that data access layer it actually is a connection between the data storage and the quality layer data preparation layer assembly and preparation of data for loading in data marts so this is a sort of a portion where before it gets loaded into the data marts metadata repository layer it is data about data so in a data warehouse there are lots of data which is spread across the entire spectrum of data warehouse so where what data is actually metadata repository layer talk about that warehouse management layer scheduling of tasks to build and maintain the data warehouse application messaging layer transporting information between various layers and internet or internet layer this is the communication layer which is the tcp ip layer above so with this we come to an end of uh, today's session and we will uh, take up further sessions in our next uh, session when we come across thank you